My roots with the city of Edmonton synagogues are long and deep. My paternal grandfather, Solomon Estrin, was the sexton or the shamus of the old Beth Israel synagogue on 95th Street. He did that in about the 1920s, and his primarily religious duties made it the job of his dreams. When they sold the homestead and came into actually Calgary, it was very difficult for him to get a job because he wouldn't work on the Sabbath. But when he got this job in Edmonton, it was amazing. And from the information I gleaned from the his obituary written by Mr. Jacob Balson, he was fulfilled and happy in that position until his death in 1932. He actually, in the uh, in the written material, it was apparently the largest Jewish funeral of that time. Um, Solomon was beloved and respected for his knowledge of Torah and for his people skills. Our grandfather Solomon bought a small two-story house next to the synagogue, and uh, the synagogue on 95th Street. And I have a copy of the invitation for my parents' wedding, which took place at that synagogue on July 5th, 1925 at 5 p.m., 10110 95th Street, and the reception following at 9510 101 Street or Avenue. I'm not sure which one uh, it, it is uh, today. My siblings, three of them, were born and lived in that house along with our grandparents until 1939 when the house was sold and the family moved three, blo three miles west to 122nd Street, which was then the new West End. And uh, it was a better house, a better neighborhood, and a more affluent lifestyle. Lots of Jewish families moved to that area from the East End. And we were surrounded in our neighborhood by, um, if I recollect correctly, the Superstein family, the Taradosh family, the Riches, uh, the Stabskis, uh, Dr. Schlein and his mother, the Taradoshes, and on and on. I personally was born on January 7th, 1940, and was transported to that home on 122nd Street. It was a, a small-ish, two-story, yellow stucco house, and uh, it was in the location where Paul Kane Park is today. So you can imagine it. Uh, the corner was Christ Church, where I attended Brownies, and one block away was Robertson Church. So you can identify it. Our house was also in proximity to uh, what will be, what was going to be the new Beth Israel Synagogue on 119th Street, but it hadn't been built yet. It was also close to the Glenora Figure Skating Club on 120th Street, where I spent every day after school doing figure eights and three jumps, trying to improve. I think I was then in grade six and seven at Oliver School. And on the same street, on 120th Street, was the Royal Glenora and then the, sorry, it was the Glenora Figure Skating Club and next to it was the Royal Curling Club. And they actually merged and became the Royal Glenora Club, which is in our River Valley today and where um, Howard and I have membership and enjoyed a lot of athletic activities with our children uh, in, uh, in the coming years. I do have a few memories of the old Beth Israel on 95th Street. One memory is of my mother, Rebecca, Becky, and I climbing the stairs to sit in the balcony with the other ladies where we could throw candies at the bar mitzvah boys below. And I also have a memory of standing with my father close to the front of the synagogue, underneath the balcony, and he was holding my hand, and I was surrounded by um, lots of elderly men with talisim on, 
and one of which I think was Mr. Nelson, who was then the shamus of the shul on 95th Street. And uh, in that front corner, there were benches, and you lifted up um, a, almost like a shelf, it was on a hinge, and underneath that uh, hinged piece were the sidurim and the talasim, that's how they were stored then. And um, uh, those are my memories of that synagogue, even though um, I, I was a very small girl at the time. In the early 50s, our parents moved again to the new West End, and uh, their new uh, home was at 13822 uh, Ravine Drive, and they uh, designed and built that home. They were not the only ones. All of those people mentioned before all moved to the new West End again, and we were surrounded again by many people, the, the Rollingers, the Bernsteins, the Laskins, the uh, Pekarskis, so many people bought homes in that area at that time. And um, it, uh, I guess when we moved, I was in grade eight, and I was enrolled at the new Westminster Junior High School. <laughs> and uh, when I went there, I have to say, uh, I loved my, I loved the school, I loved my teachers, I loved my classmates, and I think it was there, I believe, I learned to love school, and my destiny was set, uh, it was going to be education and ultimately teaching. Um, Westminster at that point had been open for about a year, and uh, <laughs> I was tasked with writing the school constitution for Westminster School. Well, the good news was I had a brother, Saul, who was then enrolled in law school at the University of Alberta, and together we produced <laughs> the constitution. Um, much later in life, um, well, not so much later, I returned to that school, Westminster, and I was a teacher there of uh, drama and English, uh, one of my star students in drama was Fred Singer, and um, uh, I enjoyed my, I, I really enjoyed my time there. Uh, my students were, my children were junior high age, and it was just a pleasure to teach junior high students then. And uh, much, much later, our granddaughters, um, Molly and Hannah, um, show, use, um, picked Westminster as their school of choice for junior high school. So it does have meaning for us. I mentioned the store, and I think that's kind of interesting, and you might like to hear about that. When I said that my dad worked six days a week, he owned one of the wooden stores on 101st Street between the King George Hotel and the CN tracks. That stretch had a multitude of Jewish men selling goods from fur and hides to hardware all along that strip. And my father's store was called the Standard Exchange. And the sign above it read, we buy and sell anything of value. And uh, he had, after uh, many years of making a very nice living there, he replaced his wooden store with a smart new brick structure and he sold that building uh, at 10235 and 37 101st Street to a developer who was developing the Four Seasons Hotel, which is now the Sandman, where Chops is located. I've got actually the cornerstone in, of that building in my garden. <laughs> I'm going to go back a little and transition from that Westminster school that I told you about. When it was time for me to go to high school, <coughs> excuse me, most of the Jewish kids went to Westland High School and uh, very few went to other schools. A couple did, but Westland was the key place for, for Jewish kids. 
Well, it turns out that Westland was way overcrowded and uh, they were going to build the school Ross Shepherd then. But for in the, inter, in the interim, um, a certain group of young people were asked to go to Victoria Composite High School. And I, and I was designated as having lived in the area which would go to Vic. And it was the newest and largest high school. It was called Vic Composite then because it had a big academic building in the front and at the back were tons of buildings where they um, provided um, education in the trades. You could uh, study plumbing there, you could study any of the trades, and so it was really a huge school. Um, so anyway, I was in the academic section, and um, uh, I came in, and uh, I spotted an individual, an individual, and uh, at that point, I thought to myself, I think this guy who was then president of Vic is going to be my life companion. And sure enough, it was Howard Starkman and he did become my life companion. Some years later, uh, I returned to Vic, uh, Victoria School, and uh, I taught there. Uh, I was an English teacher there. And then a third reiteration I actually came back to Victoria School uh, in continuing education. And uh, just, just as we're doing history, it's interesting to note that the old Vic School, the predecessor of this giant composite school, um, uh, educated most of the children of the Jewish families from the East End. and. Um, that's the school that Joseph Schachter, who uh, founded the Citadel, went to. That's the school that Arthur Hiller, the famous director, went to. And so um, it does have a huge history um, in, for our Jewish families and for the city of Edmonton. My first teaching position was at Queen Elizabeth High School, where I taught English and drama. That first year, <laughs> I had grade student, grade 12 students who were almost as old as I was and certainly larger and very much taller even when I wore my three inch heels, which in those days teachers wore, <laughs> believe it or not. And uh, we produced our first year play was Arsenic and Old Lace and my then fiance Howard sold out the house to everyone he knew, his relatives, his friends, other articling students, other lawyers, and we jam-packed the place. Um, at that school where I taught, uh, Queen Elizabeth High School, I first met and worked with Mr. Michael Strombitsky, and he went on to be the superintendent of Edmonton Public Schools, and he was superintendent during my tenure as school trustee. So if we're talking buildings, one of the buildings that means part of my essence and part of my being, and where I reinforce my support for excellence in public education, is the big blue building on Kingsway and 101st Street. Um, I would... Um, I have to say that I believe strongly in a high quality public education system based on fairness, inclusiveness, accessibility, fiscal accountability, and a commitment to excellence for all students. And I was really thrilled uh, to be elected to serve on the public school board for two terms, and part of that is board chair. So needless to say, that blue building became a home to me every Tuesday night and sometimes more often um, for about eight years. And so it's, uh, 
it's a place of quiet it's a place of intelligence it's a place that i like to come to and even now um, i've been privileged to work on a diversity day conference for youth and we i come back to that building to work with some of the staff and i'm always pleased to be there I was a teacher for over 30 years, but in 1975, I took a little bit of a slight career change, and I went into continuing education, teaching adult upgrading, first at Vic, and later at Alberta Vocational College, now Norquist. And what is adult education? Well, at the beginning, when I worked in those two places, we were adapting high school courses for adults because you can't teach the same literature and you can't have the same adult uh, uh, stories um, or perspective for adults that you have for young students. So that was our challenge. And uh, ABC, as it was known, was located on 108th Street and 102nd Avenue. It's still there. It's uh, greatly expanded. Um, they have almost taken over all of 108th Street between 102nd and 103rd Avenues. And um, it was a, a return to a downtown school from the old Talmator to ABC where I worked more than 15 years. Um, it might interest you to note that Alberta Vocational College was established for um, Army veterans who came back and wished wish to have some retraining. And that was the beginning of that school. And uh, it subsequently has maintained its um, main purpose of retraining, but of course has added things since that time. Um, I had fun there. I, I did teach some regular classes, teaching English grades, to grades equivalent of grades 11 and 12. But I also um, did some continuing education in the sense that I developed a, an English program for Russian physicians. They were young kids in their 20s who were already accepted at a medical school in Canada and we uh, worked for the improvement of their language skills before they went to actually Dalhousie to take their medical training. I also did, which was kind of ahead of its time, I uh, created and managed a uh, cross-cultural training program with an Aboriginal focus for a power company, teaching them how to deal with their customers when they went out to deal with power issues. Uh, in 1989, I uh, was elected as a public school trustee uh, in the fall when civic elections are on. And um, sometime uh, late September, uh, I was just after the election, I was called into my senior supervisor at uh, the college and I thought I had really done something wrong and I was in trouble. And, uh, but it turned out that he asked me, now that I was a, an elected school trustee, if I could um, coordinate um, a, um, what would you call it, an initiative uh, for literacy. He had been involved in an adult literacy group along with a chap from uh, Edmonton Catholic Schools. Um, and uh, they wanted to have a major bang up initiative because 1990 was uh, declared the United Nations, the in International Year of Literacy by the United Nations. There's been another one since, but that was the, the one. So he said, uh, and be he said, because you're a trustee, Maybe you can get Edmonton Public Schools involved and we can do something. Well, um, I, my answer to him was, I don't want to do any fundraising, but if it's other things, I'll be happy to do it. So I went to my uh, 
back to my school board people and uh, actually the idea caught fire. So this was the first initiative and the only initiative really for um, school children to hold hands with adults and to uh, preach literacy because it had always been adult illiteracy and the schools looked after literacy because that's what schools are about. So the project started with uh, Alberta Vocational College, Edmonton Public Schools, and Edmonton Catholic Schools. Probably the first time they joined hands to do anything of this nature. And uh, we didn't, there was no cost to anybody. Everything was done by the personnel of those three organizations. And uh, the in those years, ABC had a, a printing shop and we did the print there and it came into being. Sometime later, we were joined by the library, by Grant McEwen College, by the University of Alberta, by the Francophone School District, and one year even by the Royal Bank. But it became uh, a weekly annual celebration of literacy. So every year, the first year, the first week in October, um, schools throughout the city, public Catholic Francophone, celebrate reading. So reading, in which I was lucky enough to create and share and participate in over the years is a citywide initiative which raises public awareness for literacy and its important role in the success of individuals and communities. The event is an annual week-long celebration, the first week in October, and there's usually about 100,000 students and volunteers reading in schools, libraries, other public places, and um, um, one year we bungee jumped for reading. One year we did poetry at a at a Van Edmonton Eskimos football game, and uh, we had an opening at the beginning of the week and a closing at the end of the week. And uh, in more than uh, seventy five percent of the times over the years, the Minister of Education would come. People just loved reading and uh, they loved to participate. And it was a great opportunity for adults who hadn't been to school for a long time to come into a school, to talk to the kids, read them stories and get feedback from the kids. And for the kids to find out what they do in real life and how important literacy is for them. So uh, we, um, I guess, um, Basically, that's it. But I was very fortunate uh, to be in attendance and to participate in 2019 when we had a huge celebration for the 30th anniversary of reading in the public school, which bears my name. And I have to say there are not many initiatives which last now 32 years. It's been a long run for reading. Uh, in 1996, you may find this interesting, I was honored to be named ship sponsor of HMCS Edmonton. And I had the great thrill of cracking a champagne bottle to launch the ship in Halifax, and then the next summer to commission the ship in Esquimalt, BC at the other coast. I believe that I'm the only Jewish person to have launched a Canadian naval vessel. The ship is an adjunct to the city of Edmonton and proudly represents our city wherever it sails. If you don't get out to the West Coast to see the HMCS Edmonton in dock, you can go to City Hall here and you can see a perfect uh, two-scale model of it done the year that it was commissioned. Um, you know, it was flattering to me and it was exciting that some of the sailors from the HMCS Edmonton were so inspired by reading. One captain, uh, whose wife was a teacher, decided to have a reading at her school 
and the winners who read a certain number of uh, lines and books were invited to be take a trip on the HMCS Edmonton and have a scavenger hunt there. And that was an exciting. Another year, the sailors who always donate a certain amount to charity um, took their money and three uh, sailors came to Edmonton, spoke to the kids at Reedin, and then donated uh, X number of books uh, to, to the Reedin. So it was really very interesting to have those two initiatives cross paths. I guess it's no secret to say that not only my vocation, but my passion in life was and continues to be education. And the old mantra, free education with the addition of excellence, remains part of my advocacy. So when I'm privileged to speak to the young sailors uh, at Esquimalt, I advocate for and reflect on the benefits of lifelong learning, which they're doing as they man these ships. Our children's future, and indeed our country's future, is dependent on the fundamental core value endorsed by so many, and certainly by so many of our Jewish faith. We are called the people of the book. Following my years as a public school trustee and chair of the board, I'm so humbled and appreciative to have my name associated with a very successful K-9 public school in Terwilliger. It was opened in 2010. The Esther Starkman School may pay tribute to me on a personal level, but it should be noted that it reflects as well the inclusiveness of our community of Edmonton in as much as I am identified as Jewish by faith. Thank you.